Hello and welcome to yet another video by New York Stilo and today as promised we're going to be talking about Reef Aquarium Supplements. Now uh, briefly before I start the video I wanted to say that you know this is going to be sort of a general information for you guys uh, mostly for beginners and stuff like that to get a little bit of an idea of what some of these supplements do for you and how important they are in marine systems. Now if you uh, need more information on each and every one of these products you can definitely go online and check uh, each one individually and if you can't find the information that you're looking for you can certainly hit me up on YouTube and I'll answer back to you within 24 hours now you're probably looking at this table and thinking to yourself like oh man do I need to own all of this just to have a reef aquarium the answer is yes and no and I'm gonna get into that a little later in the video but what you're looking at here are some supplements here on your right hand side and we're gonna get into each and every one individually and on the left hand side here we have some test kits and a small bag of salt now there's a reason for that a small bag of salt and we're gonna get into that as well but before anything I want to talk about how important it is for you to own uh, some of these test kits you know before you start supplementing your system I mean you surely do not want to overdose your system and you definitely want to know what's going on in your system before you start dosing so you know there's no real you know to be honest with you I there are a lot of different types of test kits out there different companies different all of them are gonna do the same for you some of them are gonna be a little more effective than others for example I own uh, some API test kits and I also own some Salifer test kits you know and API I find to be uh, you know a little easier to use but maybe not as close as accurate as that of a Salifer test kit you know Salifer is, is certainly a little more accurate and uh, but may not may be a little bit more difficult to use you know, so in a sense, I highly recommend you guys to get your test kits. You know, don't shy away from testing your system because eventually this is going to come second nature to you. You're going to be, in the, initially when you set up your system, if you're starting out in this hobby, you're going to be doing some tests and you're going to find it overwhelming, but you're going to do so much of it, you know, on a weekly basis that eventually you're going to get to the point that you're really not even going to need to do as much testing. You know, you, you're just going to have a, an eye. To pick up you know what's going on in your system without even having to test now briefly the reason why I have this bag of salt in here is because it you know it's very important for me to cover that as well you know if you frequently do water changes in your system uh, on a weekly basis even 10% 15% 20% if you do them every two weeks or on a monthly basis you are going to be replenishing your system of some of these supplements that is very important for you to understand that your salt mix was designed and created to have the exact proper amounts of these elements so every time you do a water change you are sort of replenishing your system you know back with some of these elements now it is possible for you to run a marine system considering that it can be turned into a full-blown ecosystem where you do not have to do water changes and in such a case um, the use of heavy supplementation is needed but even if you still do water changes on your system you know you may need some of these supplements now there is no one system that is the same as the other you know what works for me may not work for you but if you're gonna have wall-to-wall -wall corals in your system you certainly want to be sure to own uh, some of these supplements As a matter of fact I recommend you to have them in hand even if you just have live rock in your system because you never know when some of this stuff is gonna happen or, or something's gonna go wrong now briefly before I start talking about the supplements themselves um, what I bring I want to touch up two uh, quick things Number one, I stated in previous videos that, uh, you know, the nature and the ocean is such a vast, uh, large body of water, which has endless, endless supply of these supplements and the water chemistry never changes in nature. You know, we try to replicate nature as much as possible and the majority of your rocks and corals are going to be dependent on this. But because we have an enclosed system in our home, you know some of these uh, supplements are going to be depleted which is the, the main purpose of you making this video now the, the second thing I wanted to cover is that behind the supplements here 
I've got calcium and alkalinity. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on these two. And the reason for that is because I have a video on, on calcium and alkalinity in itself. So if you are want more information on that, you know, uh, check out my channel. And I've got a video on calcium and alkalinity alone. Because I, in the end, we could sit here and talk about calcium and alkalinity all day. So I try to put as much information as I can in a 10-minute video. And if you have any questions, certainly uh, don't hesitate to ask. Now, we're going to move on to the supplements that you see here. And there's one supplement that's missing that I use, and that's iodine. And we're going to talk a little bit about iodine uh, in general. The reason why I don't have the iodine is because I used it up on a freshwater dip that I was doing to the elegance coral. And for those of you who have been following my videos, you know, I do have a disease going on in my elegance coral. And I did some research, and it's actually recovering quite well. So I don't have any more iodine, but um, I will be discussing that on a future video when I show you guys what I did with the elegant coral. But we're going to start with magnesium here. Now, magnesium is very important. It gets absorbed by your live rock. The sand uh, gets absorbed by the corals. And uh, most importantly, magnesium has a direct relationship with calcium. And which brings me to an interesting story I want to touch up real quickly. You know, when I first started my system, probably like many of you who started in this hobby, you did not imagine that you actually needed to know anything about the chemistry of seawater. So I set up my system, you know, and, and I let it be, and I didn't supplement or anything, no calcium, no anything. All I did was really check the ammonia nitrite, nitrate, you know, and pH. And of course, six months to six months down the road, I started to notice that my live rock was starting to bleach. So the coralline algae was dying out. So that led me to get up off the front of the, the display and start asking questions. So I went to different live fish stores and stuff like that. And they told me, well, did you check your calcium level? Which led me to, bam, get yourself some test kits. So I checked the calcium level and it was ridiculously low. I believe it was like 250 to, 30, to 300 ppm, you know? So, uh, you know, I figured, I said, well, you know what? Uh, let me go get a calcium additive. And I did that. But no matter how much calcium I added to the system, I could not get it above 350 ppm. And the reason for that was magnesium. Magnesium, once again, as I stated before, plays a very important role in uh in and and uh and has a direct relationship with calcium and if your magnesium levels are not up to par which should be between 1250 and, thir and 1350 i would say 1280 and 1300 would be where i like to keep it um there are test kits for uh, magnesium directly but um i rely mostly on my calcium if i see that my calcium levels are not raising as they should definitely look into your magnesium level you know, so definitely very important supplement. If you have any more questions on it, you can do some research or hit me up. We're moving on. So we're moving on to essential elements. And essential elements is basically a mixture of any and every kind of major and minor trace elements. So it's going to contain strontium. It's going to contain iron, calcium, alkal uh, not necessarily alkalinity, but uh, magnesium uh, and stuff like that. So... Uh, very important uh, supplement to own, you know, just to have on the side, you know. And if you don't do frequent water changes, it is extremely important for you to own this because uh, the system gets depleted of these elements rather fast. Now, next to it is strontium and molybdenum. Very important in the coral growth. Very important for anemones and the such. Now, the thing about strontium is that it is inside of essential elements you will find uh, concentrations of uh, strontium the problem with using essential elements only is that when you neglect your system for too long what happens is that if you want to try to add essential elements you're gonna be lacking some elements which were depleted faster than others and therefore they have individual uh, um, supplements such as strontium molybdenum iodine which I used up and stuff like that very important you know usually quickly I'm gonna tell you this other quick story um, your live rock and your corals as I stated are going to be your number one 
warning sign that there's something going on in your system and I have a yellow scroll coral and the yellow scroll coral con considering the fact that I have no nitrates no no problems none of the such I got the correct lighting was sort of turning a little brown so I asked myself I say you know what there must be something wrong with the chemistry of my water so I went ahead and added some strontium and some iodine and some essential elements and immediately within three days it started to color up really well so you know the fact that your uh, corals are actually losing uh, some colors can actually be an indication that you're actually lacking some supplements now next to it is iron and manganese now iron is very important for the growth of macroalgae uh, your live rock and your corals are actually going to absorb these elements and once again it is contained in uh, one bottle of essential elements but sometimes your rocks and your corals are going to deplete it faster than you can add it by just using this one product that you see here so therefore they individually make each and every one of these products iodine also extremely important now many factors come into play when using different supplements do I use all of them the answer is no and the reason for that is because I'm doing an experiment on a 30 gallon system which contains miracle mud which the miracle mud is set to release some of these elements slowly back into the water and for the purpose of me experimenting on whether or not I recommend the miracle mud I have only relied on dosing calcium and alkalinity to maintain those water levels but certainly when you start out in this hobby people are going to tell you well you need to test for ammonia nitrite nitrate ph phosphates all of that very important for you to have a you know those uh for test to test for those elements but it is very important for you to have a test kit of calcium and alkalinity even if you're going to have a fish only system with live rock if you're gonna have a fish only system with no live rock you can certainly get away with it but me I try to replicate nature as much as possible and I want to ensure that these animals um, especially corals and your live rock has the necessary and proper amounts of these elements that are much needed in your system so this has been a quick video and uh, certainly if you guys have any quick questions and stuff like that hit me up um, do some research on your own help me help you and I can definitely answer some of these questions but um, if your live rock are giving you indication or your corals that something is wrong and everything else seems to be right then maybe you're lacking some of these elements and it's important to take that into consideration now um, don't shy away guys you know it, it'll come second nature to you it really will eventually in time you will get so good at it that you will not need to test your system and you will just know you're gonna have an eye for it you're gonna be like something's wrong with these uh, with these corals maybe I'm missing some of these major and minor trace elements but I hope that this video has been informational for you um, stay tuned for future updates got a lot of updates coming up including the uh, 90 gallon system everybody's just kind of waking up it's the morning hours here and um, Lots of you have asked me questions about the 90 gallon system, you know, how's it doing and stuff like that. Everything is doing absolutely beautiful in the 90 gallon system. You know, it's just that nothing has really changed. So what I'm going to do is once I'm done with the 30 gallon system, I'm going to start working on the 90 gallon system. I got to replace the stand, uh, wall to wall corals, all of that. Many video updates to come. My second video coming up is going to be on UV sterilizers. I feel like I've gotten uh, enough questions on UV sterilizers to really cover uh, two UV sterilizers I have in my closet. So stay tuned for those videos. Um, also an update on the 30 gallon tank which I added some really nice SPS's and I should be releasing that video quickly. So once again hope you've enjoyed the video. This is New York Stilo signing out. Any questions, comments, concerns, disagreements Hit me up on my page, New York Stilo signing out. Peace.